Now we've got a bit of old school footage, Giro della Toscana 2017, and my oh my do we have a strong breakaway. Nibali, Bernal, Backertz and Cummings. Now this is a Nibali fresh off second in the Vuelta. Um, he then went on to win Lombardia, second in Emilia, um, and third in Trevalli Varacina. This is Egan Bernal, got a contract with Ineos, just won Lavenir. Freddie Backer, top three in last, top five in La Semaine. And um, Tour de Limousin, I believe it was. And he also got a top five. Um, oh, sorry, he also got a top ten, I think it was, in Binch, Jimmy Binch, after this, or a top result. And then you also got Steve Cummings, who won national championships uh, in both road race and time trial. He had a rough season before. Um, and then the Tour, he was close to winning a stage on the top of the aerodrome um, after climbing the Parasud. So, very strong breakaway, 4.6 kilometres to go. And everyone's pulling strong turns. Uh, Nibbling and Cummings are really driving their brake. Backerts and Bernal were pretty happy to be there, I think. Um, Bernal has obviously had a ridiculous season this year, and he won most of the stage races he was doing and managed to win the Coppa Italia uh, for for Nippo Vini. Uh, no, not Nippo Vini. No, what team? Do you, Andrini Cinemax, sorry. Uh, and yeah, Nibali is in top condition. You know, second in the world, so behind Froome was very solid. Behind, uh, Nibali had the trump card. I think he should have played a bit more. Uh, he had uh, Sonny Colbrelli, who obviously is very, very strong. I think it finished second in one of the bunch sprints um, behind Sagan in this tour. Um, so he's super, super strong in the tour in 2017. So I think, realistically, Nibali should have uh, waited. Obviously, he's their team leader, but I still think he should have sat on more, um, potentially I'm foreshadowing what's going to happen a bit more. Um, but anyway, suffice to say, the break was, was very, very strong. The chase was also strong, um, but I think, you know, as you saw from the profile, it's pretty hilly. This is flat. It's got sort of flat circuits um, in the running to the final. And these guys are just pulling pulling strong turns. I mean, like, they were on fire. Like, I looked at their pro cycling stats just before this and were like, wow, this is a strong break. Um, so, yeah, like, Freddie Backup, potentially the least, you know, well known, but he, this year he had some solid results. I mean, like top three in Trobo Leon is solid, and Le Semin, um, those are the two races. And I think maybe it was 13th in Bench Jimmy Bench. Obviously, Steve Cummings is Steve Cummings. He's a breakaway master. Um, very, very smooth on the pedals. Sunglasses. As soon as those sunglasses go behind his helmet, you know there's going to be trouble. And again, Nibali just pulling turns, which I don't think he should have done. I think he should have sat on because he's not the strongest sprinter. There's no real way they can get away. Um, it's a completely flat running. Um, Bernal, I think, just wanted the points of the Coppa Italia. He probably got told by Savio, like, just get me the points of the Coppa Italia means we get a slot for the Giro next year. Um, and then, you know, that's all happy days for that that team. And Savio's got 500k or whatever it was for, for developing Bernal. So he's like, going to be a happy boy. Um, but yeah, it is interesting because you think basically, you know, Steve Cummings is a mo like, you know, very good on the track. Bronze medal, as they said in the commentary. Uh, on the track like in the Olympics in the team pursuit so he's obviously very punchy like if you're going to take him to the line you'd expect two people back at all Cummings to win and most people would say Cummings so if you're Nibali and and Bernard what are you going to do I mean I think Nibali just sits on and says I've got Colbrelli behind I'm going to wait and then do a last you know one kilometer to go attack and hope for the best Bernal I think is harder because his team boss wants him to get the points of the Coppa Italia so Coppa Italia is like a, a season-long rankings of Italian teams in um, the Italian races, and it basically means that if you win it, you get a slot to the Giro. So I think he had to pull. I don't think he could have sat on, but I think, you know, if this was, um, obviously there's, there's the GC the day after, potentially they're thinking this is a two-day stage race, so maybe they're thinking about that, um, so that, you know, there's more interest. Like, it's not as simple as just saying they're going for the stage win, but I still think they could have finessed it slightly better, especially Nibali, um, because I think Cummings and Backer especially would have been very motivated because this is a good performance for him obviously he's ridden the tour so he's no dummy but it, like you know winning uh, a state a stage here would have been pretty solid for him and Cummings hadn't had a great season um he crashed very early on obviously he won the national championships but in the tour he didn't win a stage and was probably you know out to get, prove something and out to you know try and get a good result for the team um I think he had a contract the next year so it wasn't like a contract thing but anyway so it's just yeah you know th this is a really good race I think the Giro Tala Toscana and all these Italian late classics are really really good the con the uh, footage is also available for me which is class um and the chase behind like i think they were going for gregor borle um they said in commentary at uae um but they started to mess around here 1.4k to go they got a 30 second gap i mean you sort of know it's not coming back and you can see cummings here goes to the front through the roundabout 
And I think this is just a stop anyone attacking because he goes around the roundabout. You can slow it down a little bit and just make sure that no one's going to attack into the roundabout because obviously that's a natural place. Anyway, Bernal then decides that now's the time to go. And I think this was a mistake because, yeah, he goes and Cummings is having to put a lot of work into the into the final. Um, but, it, it, you know, in on paper, I thought this was a good attack. But, like, he had really good legs. And I think he could have beat Cummings in a sprint if he hadn't have done this, uh, that effort. And then, like, it wasn't that hard because everyone managed to set on. I think they'd been doing, you know, like soft tapping turns for the last, you know, 10K, let's say. So it was sort of like one of those attacks where, yeah, it wasn't the right to go, like, straight away, I guess, because everyone's going to chase. Maybe if that had been the second attack, it would have got away. But I think Cummings was just, like, chasing everything down. Now, one two getting on the front here, and I think they had uh, uh, Xander and Maurice. I'm not 100% sure, but I think they did. Um, so back at why he was pulling before didn't really make any sense either. Um, so there, there was some, some questionable tactics going on uh, for the two teams, uh, well, especially Nibali, um, as Sonny Colbrelli was by far the fastest in the group behind. But we're coming into the final sprint, and we're going to get switched to the head-on shot. So you can see Cummings on the right-hand side. He's looking over his shoulder. There's a barrier coming up to the right, so they can't actually pass on his left hand, his left hand shoulder. So he's just looking over his right shoulder, looking over his right shoulder, making sure. And to be honest, I think at this point, like, you know, he doesn't have the best position. Backhurts just then goes way too early. Cummings doesn't even get on his wheel. Cummings just decides to go, right, I'm going in the middle. Nibali's split in between, doesn't get any draft. And look how close Burnout, if there wasn't a barrier there, Burnout was super close. We're going to watch this again, but Burnout almost got it. And Backhurts came a very long way around. So I think Cummings actually wasn't as strong as everyone predicted. And then this is why Nibali shouldn't have pulled. Because Colbrelli dusts absolutely everyone off in this sprint um, and just has it easily. Uh, so I think, yeah, they should have definitely waited uh, Nibali. Obviously, maybe if this was a one-day race, they would have done. Um, but we'll, we'll watch the overhead sprint because there were some more tactics going on there. Because Nibali didn't get a wheel. Backhurts went to the other side of the road, which was probably a good idea because no one drafted him. Um, but it did, did seem to be a slightly longer way around than what Cummings um than what Cummings did. Because you can see here, like, everyone's across the road. The only one who got some draft was Bernal, which is may maybe why he came so close. But, you know, he came the wrong side. He came on the barrier side, which is always a bit sketch. But look on this bit. Like, he actually got really close, which is why I think if he didn't do the early attack, he could have had that. Like, there wasn't much in it. Um, There really wasn't. I mean, okay, you know, he obviously lost a fair amount of ground, like, on the very line. But I think Cummings wasn't as nailed on as people thought. Um, and maybe, you know, if Bernal had known that he would have got this close, I doubt he would have attacked at all. Um, obviously, it's like half a bike length or something, but it's not, you know, for a 58 kilo climber against a team pursuit or ex team pursuit specialist, it's not, it's not bad. Um, so Bernal got second, back at third, and then Nibali fourth. Um, so anyway, cheers for watching. I hope you did enjoy this video. This is one of Steve Cummings' last, actually, really, really solid performances, unfortunately. Uh, now, then he crashed in 20, 2019, actually. And, out of contract and didn't, get, didn't renew his contract, which is a shame. Um, but I really like the man. He's an absolute legend. And uh, it's always good to see him doing well. So anyway, cheers for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And I'll see you in the next one.